Hey kids, it's the Biston Flyer here, hope you're well. You join me on a very exciting day today because uh, once again I'm lucky enough to be riding the brand new BMW R1250 GS. This time in its rally guys out here in beautiful Andalusia. I want to find out what this bike is like to tour on, so if you're interested in the BMW R1250 GS, stick around and stay tuned. So how lucky am I then that uh, once again I find myself out in uh, Andalusia in Spain's Costa del Sol. I'm riding around the uh, Sierra de las Nieves area, basically the mountainous country park, on the Toro Adventures newest machine, this, the R1250 GS, the Rally Edition, new for 2019, and a beautiful, beautiful bike. Now I have ridden the uh, 1250 GS before and uh, if you've not seen my initial review on that then uh, do check out the card in the top right of your screen and uh, have a look at my initial review where I go through all the specs of what the bike's like and uh, how it's different from uh, previous models of the GS. But on this video what I want to do is ride it all day basically and see what she's like as a touring machine because let's face it, most people are going to ride these as touring weapons. I certainly ride my older GS as such. And of course you only find out how truly good a bike is for uh, longer rides if you actually do a longer ride on it. So I got this bike all day long, I've been riding it for a couple of hours so far. I'm going to be riding it till dusk to see if there's any issues with the bike when you use it as a touring weapon. Before all that though, what I will do is stop when I find a suitable point just to show you around this bike. Because as I say, this is in the rally scheme which is a little bit different for the 2019 model year. I like the previous uh, GS Rally very much, it had the, uh, well the Rally paint scheme which was sort of grey, red and blue, but on this one this has got the, uh, what they call the HP paint scheme, slightly different, a little bit more sporty looking if anything, which is perhaps a little bit more in character with the now bit more sporty nature of the bike, now it's gained a few horsepower. One of the big differences uh, with this bike over the old Rally is this bit of graphics on the tank here, I hope you can see that okay. It didn't used to say this, it didn't have R1200 written on the old bike, I just quite like that, just gives it a bit of a more sporty feel when you're piloting the beast. And the bike generally has a more sporty feel than the previous model. So whilst the previous model was no slouch, this one has gained an extra few valuable horses, which never go amiss do they? It's still not up there with the punch of the uh, Ducati Multistrada or the KTM Super Adventure, but it's not far off. And frankly, for the sort of riding you're going to be doing on these bikes, it's ample power. Well, the roads around here are just glorious. There's not really any bad roads in this area. I'm in the Onrons of uh, Ronda, an area I've ridden actually a few times now. Absolutely beautiful riding spot. Especially nice this time of year. I'm recording this on the 29th of November. And at home, it is an absolutely horrible day. <laughs> when I travelled up yesterday, I came round the M25, which was closed. It was a typical British November day. It was foggy, it was raining. It was horrible. Jumped on a plane for a couple of hours, and here I am in this beautiful riding. Hello chaps, couple of GS's there. And I've said before, if you get weather like this, that it's an absolute tonic to come out here, particularly this time of year. Just sample some of these great rows. As you can see, the sky is perfectly clear today. It's a lovely day, the weather's set fair. It's gonna peak at something like 18 degrees. just don't get that at home in November. Anyway, back to the bike. So this particular machine, as I say, is uh, Linden's latest on the fleet. Literally has only had it for a few days, so not been ridden much, brand new bike. One of the first in Spain, I think, so really lucky and fortunate to uh, be let to ride this. So thank you very much to uh, Linden and the guys at Toro Adventures for letting me loose on the bike for a day. 
Now I'm not quite sure how the specifications work in Spain compared to how they work in the UK because of course the bike in the UK that everybody will buy will be the TE spec, stands for Touring Edition and I think that might be a UK specific model. I'm sure there's probably an equivalent for Spain and this is possibly it because this is uh, a bike that's got all the extras thrown at it. So it's got the fancy suspension, it's got the lean angle sensitive uh, ABS and traction control, all the riding modes. It's even got the new for 2019 uh, SOS feature here. I'm planning not to try it, but uh, if you do come off the bike, it does all sorts of clever things with the uh, IMU. Works out if it thinks you've crashed and uh, we'll actually contact the emergency services for you, as well as all sorts of other clever things. It's, uh, it's much more fancy than I make out. Let's just get by this car. So this new 1250 comes in a range of colours. Off the top of my head, there's uh, I think a black one, a blue one, and this the uh, the rally version. Or also there's the special edition version, which is grey with some fancy graphics. I think out of all of them, the rally actually is the nicest looking. But as it comes out of the dealer, you may want to make some changes to it if you're going to go down the rally route. For example, the rally comes with a bench seat, which I'll show you in a minute, which is slightly taller than the standard seat. Now on my GS, I've got the low seat fitted. I'm uh, five foot eight with a 32 inch length leg. And I find on my GS with a low seat, I can absolutely ride it fine. I'm pretty much flat footed. On this, with the rally bench seat, the standard seat that comes with the rally now, it's a little bit taller. I'm kind of on the balls of my feet. But it's not a problem, but then I'm used to riding a GS. If you were a shorter rider, you might want to consider swapping out that seat for the two part one. But uh, if you're not unused to big heavy bikes, then this rally seat is absolutely fine. We'll see at the end of the day how comfortable it's been. So far, it feels great. And the other thing that you might want to swap out if you're going the rally route, I certainly would, is this little screen. Now on these roads at the moment, I've got it in its lowest setting and I've got fairly clean airflow coming at me, which is absolutely fine. It just feels a bit like riding a naked bike, to be honest with you. But with the seat in its, with the seat, not the seat, with the screen in its fully up position, which I'll do now. There you go, that's it. That is the extent of its uh, adjustment. Bizarrely, I now get turbulent air at me. It's not too bad at these lower speeds on these twisty roads. But on faster roads, in fact, even now, I'm feeling a little bit of turbulent air hitting my helmet. I'm wearing my uh, Array Tour X4 helmet, which is a peaked uh, adventure style helmet. And I'm getting a little bit of buffet off that screen and vibration. It's a nasty frequency as well. It's, it's not buzzy, but it's quick and horrible. I think if I was to get the rally edition of the bike, I'd definitely get that screen swapped out for the bigger screen. Because touring on this bike with that little screen would become a bit of a nuisance. I'm loving this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So let's get this put back down to its lowest spot where it's definitely more comfortable, certainly with my helmet. May not be a problem for you if you're a different height to me, or you wear a different style of helmet, but certainly for me, screen down is a better position if you're gonna go with a standard screen. I love this uh, new engine though, the shift cam technology. You can't tell that it's kicking in. It may well not be kicking in at these uh, relatively slow speeds I'm doing on these twisties. But on the faster roads I was on earlier, you just can't tell when the valves change to a different opening. It's very cleverly done. And the engine just feels that much more eager than the previous bike. And for me, even better is the smoothness of the engine now. You wouldn't even know you're riding a boxer. In fact, you wouldn't necessarily know you're riding a twin. It's so smooth now. Wonderfully agile handling on the GS. But then that's always been the case because again, of that boxer engine, it's low center of gravity means you really can chuck around these sorts of corners. And it's a beautiful bike, even when you get to the twisties. This bike, of course, fitted with the uh, Quick Shift Assist Pro, both up and down clutchless gear changes, which of course you don't need, but it makes for a much more relaxing and, in my mind, fun ride when you're out on tour. And I 
can't believe how lucky I've been today with this weather. At this time of year, this part of Spain, the weather can go either way. In fact, I was here uh, about a month ago. Got some videos coming up. I'm probably going to be publishing these videos slightly out of order, so I apologise for that. But there are some videos coming up soon of me riding around here when the weather was a little bit more iffy. So here we go, look now, a little bit faster. And I can really feel that uh, wind blast in my face with this short screen. Definitely needs the bigger screen if you're going to be doing touring on this bike. Right, let me find a decent spot to pull over. And let me show you around this, uh, well, let's face it, magnificent motorcycle. Oh man, these views up here. Look at that. Absolutely stonking. Right, I should be enjoying the views. I'm trying to find somewhere to stop so I can show you around this bike. Yeah! This will do. Oh, keyless condition, of course on the new R1250 just like on the old model and here she is the brand new for 2019 R1250 GS Rally what a beautiful looking machine quite a different uh, colour scheme to the old rally uh, let's just get the visor up for a bit of air um, most notably you've now got these bits that are all in white that uh, on the previous rally were in grey and of course you've got these really blingy gold wheels that I think look absolutely fantastic anyway let me get my other camera out and uh, I'll kind of walk you around the bike and show you some of the some of the different features on it Okay then, so in case you didn't see my uh, initial review when I first rode the R1250GS, let me just talk you through the basic specs of the bike as I show you around. So here we go, Here's, this is the thing that this bike really is all about, it's the new shift cam engine. It's a 1254cc now rather than 1170cc like the old one used to be. It uh, puts out 136 brake, brake horsepower, not 125 brake horsepower, with 105 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it was 95 uh, foot-pounds on the previous bike, so definite increase in uh, usable torque in the places where you want it. Um, brakes on here, it's got, uh, this has got the BMW brakes, which is quite odd. Um, they're gold on the rally, which is nice. They're black on the, on the standard bike, um, but on the old bike, of course, it had Brembo's, but uh, these seem to work absolutely fine. Uh, what else to uh, tell you about the spec? Seat height, um, 870 millimeters. As I mentioned before, this is the standard rally seat. Uh, I think it looks absolutely splendid on the bike. So if you are tall enough to uh, use it, then uh, great, but you could swap that out for a two piece. They are interchangeable, that's the good news. Uh, tank capacity on this, 20 litres usable. Uh, I think it's something like four litres that's unusable, but uh, you know, definitely good for a couple of hundred miles, no doubt about that. And uh, electronics wise, of course, it's got every bit of electronics known to man. So as I say, for full details of the spec, do check out my uh, my previous review of the R1250GS. I'll put a card again up here for that review. Um, anyway, so some of the other things to point out on the rally version specifically then. Let's have a little look at it. So uh, on this particular bike, as I say, it's, this is that, a very high spec one. So we've got these um, frame covers here as well that I don't think had on the, on the standard bike. Um, it's got these amazingly blingy um, gold wheels, uh, complete with the clever spoke arrangement that BMW do, that means that you can run tubeless tyres even with spokes. Interesting to note that we've got a Brembo caliper here, as opposed to that um, non-Brembo one on the front, which is really, really odd. I'm not sure why BMW are doing that, but uh, they work absolutely fine, so you don't need to see that as a negative. Um, the paint scheme on here, uh, quite different to the previous rally. The previous rally had um, silver paintwork, whereas, of course, this has got the white here now. Um, and looking very closely, I thought this was going to be pearlescent, uh, but in fact it's a flat white. Um, the blue colour here is pearlescent. I'll just show you close up on that. It's a lovely, um, lovely quality and lovely graphics. But to be honest, I'm not quite sure whether I prefer the looks of this, the new rally, or the old one. This one is what they refer to as the uh, HP paint scheme. Either way, it does look lovely, and I do think it's, uh, out of all the colours you can get, it's probably my favourite one. Uh, this is this little screen that uh, I mentioned earlier. Uh, I mean, it, I'm not even sure it looks good, actually. It certainly doesn't work as well as the bigger one. I would definitely swap that out if I had one of these. Uh, the front beak is a little bit different. Uh, this looks like it's uh, got a beak off of an adventure. Uh, but I think that's good. And this is um, a Toratec um, light guard that the guys at Toro Adventure have added just for protection of the light because they could be expensive to replace. 
uh, white hand guards as you can see not sure if I like white or not possibly think about sorting those out maybe for some black ones I think the white uh, could show up every particular mark uh, now of course on the rally you might uh, notice another change black handlebars which I think look really smart uh, and of course uh, for modern day GS is black switch gear as well whereas on my older bike uh, they're, they're grey so that's nice as well and of course the TFT screen the keyless ride all the stuff we've seen before but uh, absolutely beautiful beautiful machine Alrighty, so uh, that's what she looks like. I'm going to jump on and ride her some more. Oh, crazy views. Whoop. Let's concentrate on the riding, not go off the edge. <laughs> Nearly caught me out there. Wow, what a cracking biking road. Or road. Country, Spain is, eh? Especially on these new bits of tarmac. Beautiful. Well, it's just coming up to lunchtime, and my stomach's telling me... Uh, I need to find somewhere to stop for a bike to eat, but uh, what an absolutely cracking day I'm having on the bike. I mean, to be honest, you'd have a cracking day on any bike around here, wouldn't you, in this sort of weather, particularly at the end of November. How lucky am I? All right, I'm gonna crack on for a few more hours. I'll speak to you later. Check out this TFT when the sun is behind you, it becomes basically unreadable. Not a problem you're going to have in Blighty, very often I assume. But again, if you're out on tour in a hot country like Spain, could be an issue. I guess pretty much any TFT, or indeed for that matter normal clocks, when the sun is uh, that bright behind you are going to be difficult to read. But uh, that's one little thing that's not so good about the bike. See, there we go again, look, the sun's on that TFT. And uh, I'm at a slightly different angle to you, but in the wrong spot, you can't read it. Small point, but uh, something I've noticed whilst riding in this beautiful weather. Another cracking view. I'll tell you what, if you have had enough of the winter blues at home and you do fancy just a quick tour, then you could do a lot worse than southern Spain in winter, I tell you. You can get unlucky and have dodgy weather. But equally, you can get lucky like I have today. Look at this. Absolutely perfect riding weather. It's currently 16 degrees. Woo! This bike absolutely flies now with the new engine. Brilliant. You particularly feel the extra poke towards the top end is where it's uh, most noticeable, I think. Look at this traffic. Oh, motorcycling doesn't really get better than this, does it? Especially if you can sneak a little weekend away in the winter. What a road. So on higher speed roads, that bit of extra power just comes in really nicely. Not that the old bike was underpowered in any way. But there's absolutely no need for any more power on the bike. Holds a really steady line once you set her up. And if you're doing long motorways or auto route miles, you can do very long days in the saddle, be very comfortable. Even with this little screen in its down position, the airflow is actually smooth and it's no longer a problem, but uh, you are in the air blast, as I said before. Right, quick fuel stop, no surprises there. Let's see what uh, the range is giving me on the bike. It'll be in, uh, oops, not that one. <laughs> okay, so I've just filled up and it's saying I've got a range of 337 kilometers. So uh, based on my current riding, I'm in uh, road mode at the moment. So 337 kilometers, what's that? About uh, 180 miles, something like that. 
I would have thought actually you'll get a bit more than that. My kit, my um, conversion rate probably hasn't worked very well there. I'll do the conversion and stick it on the screen. So this is the lovely town of uh, Ronda, a place I've been to a few times actually. I won't uh, talk too much about it because uh, I actually last time I came here I stayed here uh, and uh, I do do a little bit of a tour around. So I'll save Ronda for another video. So stick around, stay tuned to the channel if you want to know more about this place. So this great road now is the uh, A397, the so-called uh, Ronda Road. I've ridden it uh, several times. It's one of my favourite roads in the area, not because it goes through the most amazing scenery, although it does have pretty good scenery, it has to be said, but uh, mainly because it's a nice fast road with these sweepers. And it's such a nice road. It's one of the roads that uh, many of the motorcycle and indeed car testers come and use. And when they want to do photo shoots and things like that, or if they want to do press launches, this often is the road that they'll use because it's uh, well, it's just a lovely road to drive on or ride on. And as you can see, on a sunny, warm November day, very little traffic. What's not to like, eh? So it's been a great day on the uh, R1250GS. Thoroughly enjoyed my touring on it. Very much... Uh, on the kind of home straight now, if you like. It's just my chance to get past here. I'll get a bit closer to home, and then I'll give you my summary of what it's like to tour on it. I love this road. Yeah! Well, I said it didn't have the best views. Maybe I was a little bit hasty. The views are pretty good. So I'm uh, well on the way back now, I've just come through Marbella, I'm on the sort of coastal road heading back to base and uh, it's uh, what, just about 20 past four, so I've been on the bike about six and a half, seven hours today, so a fair old day's uh, riding, it's been absolutely fantastic, beautiful weather and scenery as you saw, the bike has been brilliant, but no bike is absolutely flawless, is there are a couple of things about the bike when you go touring that I don't like. Uh, things that are easily fixed, luckily. First off, the seat. Uh, the rally bike has that sort of bench seat, which is, uh, after a few hours, gets a little bit uncomfortable. Well, to say it's uncomfortable is, is unfair, actually. It's not as comfortable as the standard two-part seat on the standard GS. So I think if I had one of these rallies, I would uh, swap that out if I was going touring, get the two-part seat. That's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, the other thing which we talked about a lot is the little screen. When it's fully down as it is now on a faster road like this, you're okay. You're in the airflow, but it's, it's clean air, it's alright. But if you put the screen up and attempt to shield you some more, you then get turbulent air, so that's not good. And then last but not least, uh, the TFT, which I absolutely love on the Beamer. Uh, unfortunately, when the sun's directly behind you, if it's a sunny, bright, sunny day like it has been today, then uh, that is, is very difficult to see. But again, small point, not going to happen much if you get one of these in Blighty, that has to be said. But overall, absolutely love the bike. As uh, you may know, I'm a bit of a GS fanboy. The, uh, this new shift cam engine is super smooth, super sweet. The extra power is nice, it sounds good, goes well, you can chuck it about. An absolute pleasure to ride. So, uh, yeah, really enjoyed today. It's been great. Uh, must say thank you to the guys at Toro Adventure for letting me borrow this bike. Brand new, they've barely ridden it themselves. Uh, if you want to come and have a go yourself, then get in touch with uh, Toro Adventure. I'll stick a link uh, below in the description so you can get in touch with them. And, uh, you know, you never know, you can come and ride this very bike. Try before you buy if you wanted. Uh, anyway, I've had a great day. Hope you've uh, enjoyed that. Hope that uh, little look at touring on the uh, R1250GS rally has been of interest. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.